If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Gen Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Well, it's a little bit late in the afternoon to be able to uh, record this on the Wednesday, but nevertheless... I am here now. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Ken Z Retro here. Welcome to this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news, rumours and of course those sweet points and trophies at the end of the show. So what do we have in store this week? Well, we have got a lot to get through. We've got news from Blizzard, Fortnite, uh, there's something regarding Kickstarter, um... We have also got uh, news on the PlayStation f- on on the PlayStation Five and the next the next generation PlayStations and Xboxes. Um, we've got rumors on a Spider-Man game. Uh, on the uh, on a Spider-Man sequel. Uh, we've also got news on PewDiePie. Uh, news on Saints Row. Interestingly, there's a director interested in making a Saints Row film. Uh, we're going to be doing a reaction on this podcast. Ve- very unlikely to do these reactions, I know. But it's going to be a reaction to the first Sonic the Hedgehog trailer that just released over the last couple of days. Uh, games with gold. And it's, well, the bat- it's the free games battle in for May 2019. Eight Xbox have the advantage. They are currently 3-1 up. And it is up to Sony to try and close that gap to 3-2 before we head into June and into E3. So we've got that coming, we've got all that coming up on this week's show. But before we get started, a big shout out as always to my good friends over at Boomerang Mentors. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial and you get three free game rentals. There are no elite fees, you can keep the game as long as you like to 100% to get the 1000 gamer score or get the elusive platinum trophy or keep the game forever at a discounted price on the online store. Once you start renting, you're going to start saving. At boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. No gaming screw-ups this week, so let's just get right into the news. And this is very interesting on PC Gamer. Blizzard are not going to be at Gamescom this year. You're thinking, what? Blizzard? Not at Gamescom? It's one of the biggest shows of the year. But surprisingly, that's not the case. Anyway, this is what we have to say. So here we go. Gamescom is the biggest video game trade show in the world. It drew 370,000 visitors in 2018 compared to just over 69,000 for E3. Um, People talk more about E3 rather than Gamescom. It's open to the public while E3 is, technically at least, mainly an industry-only event, which is obviously a big factor in that difference. But even so, there's no denying that its major international event... Guys, proofread these articles! But even so, there's no denying that it's a major international event. Despite that, Blizzard has decided to skip it this year. I mean, this is just a shock. This is just a surprising as Sony announcing they're not going to be at E3 this year. As part of a renewed effort this year to maintain our focus on development for our current games and our future projects, we won't have a booth at Gamescom 2019, Blizzard announced today. The show is an important one for European and gl- the European and global gaming community, and we're going to miss meeting players in Cologne this year. Gamescom is traditionally a more European-oriented event than E3. It's held in Cologne, Germany, but it's also been an important platform for Blizzard in previous years. Significant reveals over the years include first post-release include the first post-release Overwatch map, animated shorts for Bastion and May. World of Warcraft expansions, and many years ago, the first publicly playable appearance 
of StarCraft 2, Heart of the Storm. Heart of the Swarm, you idiots! Heart of the Swarm! Ugh. Blizzard said back in February, after a recording of the record year resulted in hundreds of layoffs at the company, that there would be no major frontline releases in 2019, which is likely the explanation for the Gamescom absence. With less to show, it's reasonable to assume that it's holding back what it's got for BlizzCon. But Blizzard also said that this isn't a permanent state of affairs. We're looking forward to returning to Gamescom, the Gamescom floor in the future. Now, we've got a new World of Warcraft expansion coming out, I believe. I'm pretty sure we have a new expansion coming out. Either that or the expansion just... No, the expansion came out last year. That's what it was. Yeah, Battle for Azeroth. Yeah, it came out just last year. Now, that's a shame. Now, news on Fortnite. And, oh boy, this is going to be interesting. Fortnite's, Aveng Fortnite's Avengers Endgame Challenges and Balance Patch. Use Thor's Stormbreaker, Iron Man's Repulsors, and more. Thanos demands your battle stars. Ow. Quiet. Not interested. Go away. Ow, that hurts. Right, so, here we go. Avengers Endgame is out and brings the 10-year Infinity Saga arc to a close. 11 years, you idiots! Proofread your articles! And just as it did to coincide with the previous Marvel blockbuster Avengers Infinity War, Epic Games has introduced an Avengers crossover event into its multiplayer Battle Royale game, Fortnite. The new Endgame LTM splits players into two teams. One team will be aligned with Thanos and... Titori. That's how you pronounce it. If I pronounced it wrong, I apologise in advance. While the others will be taking on the role of the heroes. Team Thanos must find all the Infinity Stones and power up the Mad Titan so he can decimate the enemy forces. While the heroes can locate and equip weapons used by the Avengers to bring Thanos and his army down. Just like the last Marvel crossover event though, Epic has quickly noticed some balance problems and issued a hotfix to address them. This time it's the Avengers getting the majority of the changes, Thor's ground pound bash and throw damage have all been increased, Iron Man's gauntlet blast damage has low, was, was lowered, as, as was the health gain per Infinity Stone. Tying into the LTM is a set of challenges which, when completed, what's arguably the most exciting is a new glider that is modelled after the Quinjet. There are also sprays, emoticons, banners, theme and banners themed after the franchise. The initial three challenges are available now and involve using Iron Man's repulsors to do damage, collecting three instant three Infinity Stones, and playing seven Endgame LTM matches. More challenges will become available every two days, and you can take a look at the rewards on offer. Hmm. Interesting. But anyway, here are the end game challenges. Why are you not loading? Thank you. Complete any 10 challenges to earn the reward item Avengers Quinjet Glider. So, let's go from the bottom to the top right. Win matches of Endgame as Chitauri or Thanos. The Infinity Gauntlet Spray. Deal damage with the Chitauri Laser Rifle. 
500 de XP. Deal damage with Captain America's shield, the Captain America shield spray. Eliminations in different matches of Endgame, the Avengers spray. Deal damage while flying with the Chitori jetpack, 500 XP. Deal damage by throwing Thor's Stormbreaker axe, the Stormbreaker emoticon. Play matches of Endgame, Captain America shield banner. Collect Infinity Stones, Fortnite Endgame loading screen, and deal damage while hovering Iron Man with Iron Man's repulses. 500 XP. Complete any 10 challenges to earn the reward item, Avengers Quinjet Glider. Very interesting. Separately from the Endgame LTM, Epic is selling some Avengers-inspired cosmetic items to Fortnite's in-game store. First is a Black Widow skin, harvesting tool, and emote. But those will only be available until later, until April 25th. However, Epic says that a second Avengers set will be added to the store early next week, which which is this week, essentially. In our Avengers Endgame review, yada yada yada, blah blah blah. No, that, that bit's just talking about the film, which I'm not going to talk about because it goes into spoiler territory and fans are very protective when it comes to spoilers. I don't do spoilers, thankfully. Now, this is rather interesting. Right. There's a sex game that looks like a kinky mass effect blows up on Kickstarter. Why on earth this is happening, I don't know. Right. Four years ago, Studio Foe, F-O-W, was known as a collective that created brutal porn films featuring the heroines of popular video games. Oh my word, why on earth am I reporting on this? In these movies, characters would routinely... Eat, uh... <laughs> No, 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 scratch that, scratch that, not reading any more of that article, I am not reading any more on that article, oh my word, oh my word, no, 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 I cannot unsee that now. I cannot unsee that now. That is horrifying to see. I cannot unsee that now! I might need to wash my eyes out with that after that now. I am definitely going to need to wash my eyes out after that. Anyway, let's move on to Pokemon Go. Ah, much better. Right, so here we go. Pokemon Go adds Gen 4 Legendary Late Guardian Trio, and here's what we know so far. Yuxi, Mesprit, and Azelf have all been spotted in-game. Okay, okay, let's see what we've got. Now, the official Pokemon Go Twitter account recently teased the arrival of the Legendary Late Guardians from Gen 4. Yuxi, Mesprit and Azelf, as countless. Again, proofread these flippin' articles. As countless. As countless players have discovered since, these legendaries are already available in game, but are extremely. but they're extremely rare. Oh. Very interesting. Now, unlike most new Pokemon Go legendaries, the late guardians seem to be roaming legendaries tied to random spawns rather than raids or research breakthroughs, Latios and Latias, for instance. Latios and Latias, for instance, were just added as 
research breakthrough rewards after a previous raid appearance. It's possible new raids or breakthroughs will be added in the future, but for now, the only way to find the late guardian, a late guardian is to take a walk and try your luck. Hmm. The late guardians are so rare, in fact, that players still aren't sure if they're available worldwide. Judging from the latest play reports, it's possible that they're regional legendaries. Yuxi has been spotted in Asia, Mesprit has been seen in and around the UK, and Azelf has appeared in North and South America. This could just be a coincidence, and the game's community will undoubtedly work this out in the coming days, but we've seen plenty of Pokemon Go regional Pokemon before, so it's certainly not impossible. The good news is that players have found a way to increase the chances of encountering a late guardian. Look near a lake! There you go. Seriously, according to a tweet from the German Pokemon Go account, late guardians are more likely to spawn near water. And especially lakes. A UK player reported a Mesprit spot spotting near Regent's Canal in London, for example. So if you're hell-bent on catching a late guardian now, be prepared for a long walk on the beach or a lakeside stroll. Okay, I can handle that. I can definitely handle that. So, luckily we've got a few water spots here. So, yeah. So, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. But nevertheless, on to the next... On to the next article. On to the next article, but before we get into that, we've got, we have a reaction to do. And oh my goodness me, here we go. The first official trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog. Here we go. Green Hill. Ah, clever. 760! <laughs> oh, that's cool! Sega! Oh my word, he looks horrifying! Fast. Twenty minutes ago, an energy surge knocked out power across the entire Pacific Northwest. This needs someone who can figure out exactly what we're dealing with. You're not suggesting who I think you're suggesting. We have no choice. What the? Are you in charge here? But. That's Eggman! Allow me to clarify. In a sequentially ranked hierarchy based on level of critical importance, the disparity between us is too vast to quantify. Agent Stone? The doctor thinks you're basic. Listen, pal. Wow! Sorry, Savage! Benny. Nobody cares! Oh! <laughs> San Francisco uh, Police Department. Meow? I don't blame- I don't blame him for being horrified. Basically, it looks like I'm gonna have to save your planet. Oh, is that all you got? No, but thank you for asking. Oh boy! Uh oh. Whatever this creature is, our job is to secure it, neutralize it, see what makes it tick. A ring as a portal? Oh, Genesis, very clever. Look at this. I took nine million steps today. No, 
Just, just, just no! Stay in there and be quiet. How much longer? I can't breathe in here. Do you have your child in that bag? No. I mean, yes, it's a child, but it's not mine. No. It smells like body spray in an old ham sandwich. That's the Eggman we know. Um. Now I can see why people are not happy about this trailer. Number one, Sonic looks very horrifying. Number two, we don't see what Dr. Eggman looks re really looks like until the end of the trailer. And number three, that, number three, one of his power rings as a portal? Uh? What? Uh? What else is wrong with that trailer? Mm. Well, it's due out in November, but oh my word, it looks horrible. Horrible! Oh no, 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 no. I've always preferred Sonic over Mario, but oh my word, this might actually. This might actually make the Super Mario Brothers movie actually watchable. Sonic was designed to be a cartoon character. And that's the way he should have stayed. This one looks horrifying! Oh my word. Oh my word. Oh my word. I like the casting of Jim Carrey as Eggman though. But oh my goodness me. Whoever they've got voicing Sonic the Hedgehog. Whoever they've got, it certainly ain't Roger Craig Smith. This is probably the point where we can officially say this is going to be Super Mario Brothers all over again. Ah, November 8th. That's the release date they've got. Casting. Here we go. Right, so... James Marston. Oh, no, he's one of the main actors. James Marston. Actually, where have I seen that name before? Where have I seen that name before? Right, hang on. Casting, so here we go. Um, John Wachowski. Oh my word, Wachowski. Ben Schwartz. So Ben Schwartz is the guy that, oh my word, I've seen this guy before. I've seen this guy before. Where have I seen him before? Oh, he's the voice of BB-8. Okay. But not or not. In the Lego movie. Uh, Lego movie 2 even. I'm convinced I've seen him elsewhere. No purpose. Ah, Parks and Recreations. Arrested Bellman, Bob's Burgers, Robot Chicken, Simpsons. Oh, DuckTales! Oh my goodness me. Um, okay. An interesting choice, I would say. 
Now, what's James Marston been in? He's been Cyclops in the X-Men films. Okay. He was in Superman Returns, but nobody talks about that. Oh, he was in Hairspray. He was in, in Enchanted. Hop, uh, avoid that one like the plague. Um... So he's done a few projects. Even he's been on Robot Chicken. He was even on Sesame Street at one point. Oh, he was uh, he was one of the guests on Top Gear. No doubt talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino. Oh my. Um Interesting cast. And like I said, I like Jim Carrey as Eggman. I think I I, I... I can't unsee Sonic the Hedgehog now. I cannot unsee how Sonic looks now. Uh, looks like we're gonna need... I'm gonna need to go into something a bit more comfortable. Brian Tyler! One news. This is much more. Like it. This is much more my territory. Something to help ease the pain of that horror show of a trailer. I like the choice of Gangsters Paradise though, but really, couldn't have come up with anything else. Anyway, let's have a look. Formula One fans have more reason to cheer. Not only is the 2019 season well and truly underway, but there is more good news on the gaming front as well. Codemasters, the British video game developer, has confirmed the upcoming 2019 F1 title for the Sony PlayStation and Microsoft Xbox and Windows. This coincidentally will also be the 10th anniversary of the F1 games. Codemasters has confirmed that the game arrives on June 28th, much ahead in the season than any other F1 game in the previous years. But that is not the only good news. The F1 2019 game will be available in the Anniversary Edition and also a Legends Edition, Senna and Prost. It is the latter which will relive the iconic rivalry between Senna and Prost. You will be able to drive Senna's 1919 McLaren MP45B and Prost's Ferrari F190 and race in eight challenges. If you buy the Anniversary Edition, you will, you will additionally get to race the F1 Ferrari F10, which was driven by Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massa in the 2010 Formula 1 season, and the McLaren MP425 that Lewis Hamilton and Jensen Button raced within the 2010 season. These new additions will join the Red Bull RB6 from the same season, which is available in the current game as well. It's been available since F1 2017. F1 is focusing on rivalries for the covers of the anniversary edition of the game. Globally, you'll be able to buy the game with the cover featuring Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel to signify them going head-to-head -head with this year's Drivers' World Championship as well. Codemasters also says that gamers in Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg will be able to buy the cover that features Dutch, Ma features Dutch driver Max Verstappen facing off with Lewis Hamilton. In France, the F1 2019 Anniversary Edition will put young French drivers against each other. Charles Leclerc of Ferrari and Pierre Gasly of Red Bull. Fans can see from the new cover art design that F1 2019 has a strong theme of rivalry running through it, just like the main sport itself. As such, we are absolutely delighted to have resurrected F1's greatest ever rivalry between Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost, said Paul Pongil. 
F1 franchise director at Codemasters. But that is not all. F Codemasters has confirmed that the FIA Formula 2 Championship will also be a part of the F1 2019 game. At the start, you'll be able to relive the magic of the cars and the driver roster of the 2018 season of Formula 2, with the developer promising that the updated 2019 lineup will be added as an update later this year. We really can't wait to get started with this one. And it just so happens, ladies and gentlemen, I have pre-ordered F1 2019. I had the anniversary edition. But now, ba ba da ba 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 I now have the Legends Edition pre-ordered. So, yeah, exciting times ahead. Now, what's going to happen here with F1 2019? I might do a small giveaway of the game, but that remains to be seen. But anyway, back on to the news. And we've got news on Xbox and PlayStation. So here we go. The next generation of consoles draws cl even ever closer, having become a tangible reality after the past few weeks rather than a distant inevitability. With Sony having done a soft reveal for the PS5 and Microsoft giving up to have a big E3 presence, many believe that we'll get our first real look at the next generation very soon. But when it does arrive, what will it bring with it? According to Frederick Schreiber, Vice President of 3D Realms, whose retro old school first person shooter Wrath Aeon of Ruin launches later this year. The PS5 and the next Xbox have great things in store for the industry, seeing as they will continue to cons continue the console market's tendency to build hardware closer to PC standards. With each generation of platforms, the development environment has come closer to PC standards, which benefits all developers, said Schreiber while speaking with Gaming Bolt. We expect the next generation of consoles to be easier to develop for, alongside a much needed overall boost in performance. The current generation is already fast, but GPU memory and CPU technology have a long way have come a long way since the current generation of consoles was introduced, which will hopefully give us a lot of new opportunities with the next generation. We also asked Schreiber what his view on Stadia are, and whether he feels the PS5 and next Xbox will boast more powerful specs than Google's streaming-only platform. His response was a concise one, saying he doesn't see Stadia as being relevant at this point. Oh! Oh! Savage! And stating that Sony's and Microsoft's consoles will exceed Stadia's specs by far. Ouch! Ouch! Sony recently revealed plenty of specs for the PS5 and also spoke about other things such as the inclusion of an SSD as well as support for 8K resolutions. Microsoft haven't been as forthcoming, but it's expected that they'll be revealing the next Xbox at their E3 press event. 3D Realms Wrath of Wrath Aeon of Ruin launches on PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch later this year. Now I read somewhere over the last week that the Google Pixel, which is Google's own smartphone, they've been struggling to sell those. Now, let's put it this way. Yes, they've got Google Play, Android, they've got that. But if you're struggling to sell your own phones on the hardware front, what chance do you have with a streaming only console? At this point, Little to none whatsoever. I see this being a repeat of 
what happened I see this being a repeat of what happened with the Dreamcast. But that's just me. So, yeah, I don't think Google stand a chance here at this point. Am I surprised? No. Should I be surprised? Absolutely not. Anyway, on to our next article, and it's regarding rumors on Spider-Man 2. Whether they, whether they made Spider-Man 2, which is more than likely at this point, so, so here we go. The PS4 exclusive Spider-Man game was a huge success, earning critical acclaim and standing as one of the best-selling games of 2018. Not to mention my game of the year. Considering this, a sequel to Spider-Man seems like an, an inevitability. And while it may be way too early to know what Spider-Man 2 might be like, the recent issue, the most recent issue of the tie-in comic may give fans an idea of at least one villain to expect. So here we go. In Spider-Man City at War number two, Spider-Man faces off against the villain Swarm, symbio symbiotic warfare, anthophilia, restraining model. Oh my word, how on earth? A villain that is made out of bees and uses them in battle. Okay. Um... Swarm, as he is known in the comics, was apparently meant to be included in the original Spider-Man PS4 game, but was cut for unknown reasons. However, even though Swarm wasn't seen in Spider-Man on PS4, the character was still referenced in-game. There was a podcast segment by J. Jonah Jameson where he references a Nazi made out of beads, which was our first clue that Swarm exists in the Spider-Man video game universe. So, that's interesting to say the least. Now that Swarm has been properly introduced in the Spider-Man City at War number 2 comic, which exists in the same universe as Spider-Man on PS4, it has fueled rumours that he may be a villain in Spider-Man 2. The reality is... It's far too early to say whether or not there's any merit to those rumors, as Spider-Man 2, if it's even an, even, if it's even in active development at this time, is likely in the very early stages of development still. Hmm. Very interesting. Now, I can get behind that. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of the bees, especially growing up, but nevertheless. Penultimate article now, and it's regarding... So here we go. YouTube star Felix... Kegelberg, known worldwide as PewDiePie, has officially called for an end to the subscribe to PewDiePie meme. In a video posted Sunday, the creator of YouTube's second most subscribed channel addressed the meme and its connection to the Christchurch terrorist attack in March that left 50 people dead. While live streaming the attack on multiple mosques on Facebook, the perpetrator of the shooting could be heard saying the words subscribe to PewDiePie. It's a reference to the meme and movement formed during the nearly half-year-long race to become YouTube's most subscribed channel. 
a battle waged between Gedelberg and Bollywood Studio T-Series. The fellow creators and supporters of Kegelberg Worldwide had used the phrase as a rallying cry to help PewDiePie win the subscriber race. Immediately following the attack in New Zealand, Kegelberg said in a now-deleted tweet that he was absolutely sickened to learn that he had been named by the gunman in the video, but hadn't addressed it in the video post until Sunday, just a few days ago. To have my name associated with something so unspeakably vile has affected me in more ways than I've like shown. And here we go. Uh, the conclusion to the article is, it's unclear if PewDiePie's loyal fan base will respect his decision to end the meme or use it as an opportunity to troll further. Well, let's face it. After what happened in Christchurch, I don't blame Felix for what he did. I don't blame Felix for ending I don't blame him. I don't blame him for doing that. I don't blame him for ending the, the meme. Anyway, one more piece of news before we get into the last section of the show for this week. Director F. Gary Gary, uh, Gary Gray, known for directing Straight Outta Compton, is developing a movie based on Deep Silver's popular action game series Saints Row. The adaption will be scripted by Greg Russo, who is also writing the script for the movie reboot of the Mortal Kombat franchise. Developed by... Volition. And published by Deep Silver, the Saints Row games have a lot in common with the better known Grand Theft Auto series. They feature sandbox gameplay that mixes mic racing and gunplay and invites players to gleefully partake in various crimes around the cities of Stillwater and Steelport. In each of the games, the player is part of a gang called the Third Street Saints and must battle rival gangs, and also sometimes aliens, as part of a quest to achieve dominance and maintain their street cred. According to Deadline, the Saints Row movie is being produced through Grey's Phoenix Studios, Deep Silver parent company Koch Media, and Occupant Entertainment. Phoenix is also developing another video game movie, Echo based on the third-person sci-fi stealth game of the same name that was released in 2017. Grey has plenty of experience in the action genre, having directed Fate of the Furious, Law-Abiding Citizen, uh, Law -abiding, bleh, Law Abiding Citizen, and upcoming sequel-slash-reboot, Man in Black International, which stars Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson, and arrives in theatres on June 14th. There have been four Saints Row games released so far, with no sign of a fifth game on the horizon right now. The games got progressively more outlandish until the most recent title, Saints Row 4, in which players start out as the President of the United States, while also still being the leader of the Third Street Saints, and then acquires superpowers and has to save the world from an alien invasion. It's not yet known which of the Saints Row games Gary is developing, but we'd hazard a guess that it's one of the earlier ones, unless these, unless this is a surprise Men in Black spin-off. Though video game movies don't exactly have the best track record, there have been recent efforts to try and make the genre work. Currently, Detective Pikachu seems to be with a good chance of becoming a box office hit, thanks to its adorable live-action take on Pokemon, and some clever promotion from Ryan Reynolds, who is the voice of Detective Pikachu. Uh, the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie on the... The upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie, on the other hand... It doesn't look great. Less said about the trailer, the better. Anyway, let's not worry about that. Let's get into the free games battle for May 2019. So, what do we have in store? What do we have in store? Microsoft won last month, so therefore they 
get the advantage of going first. So, first up, we have got... Now, I'm gonna... Let's have a golf club, that's easy enough. Earth defense, comet jumper, right. Golf club, we've got the Golf Club 2019 featuring the PGA Tour on Xbox um, from May 16th to June 15th. That I can handle. Now, Marooners is one I'm not entirely familiar with. Mind you, you could say the same about the rest of the game. Is, um, but nevertheless, here we go. So, Marooners is a multiplayer party game that lets players compete in various minigames either online or via local multiplayer. Okay. The two backwards compatible Xbox 360 games in this month's lineup are Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon and Comic Jumper The Adventures of Captain Smiley. The former is the fourth game in the Earth Defense Force series, which is the first to feature an online co-op mode. The latter is a very meta adventure game in which a comic book superhero jumps into different graphic novels to learn how to fix his own series. That's it. That's an interesting premise. I like that one. I like that. But for PlayStation, on the other hand, oh boy, we've got two very entertaining games. Well, we've got two great games. One being Overcooked, which was a game with gold a few months back, and What Remains of Edith Finch. Now, well, I mean, the golf club is essentially a now a it's essentially a viable option now now that the PJ Tour, the EA Sports PJ Tour series has been killed off. Thanks, EA. I want to play in the Masters. And, let's say, Overcooked, I enjoy. What Remains of Edith Finch, I've not actually played, but people have said it's a great game. Uh, as good as the lineup for PlayStation is, as good as that is, I'm more intrigued by the comic jumper game as well i'm more intrigued by the comic jumper game besides i can play what remains of edith finch on xbox game pass anyway so i've got that i've got overcooked on xbox so i don't need to worry about that so uh, it pains me to say this but like xbox get xbox gets me so they're four one up x microsoft are four one up up in the free games battle this month, uh, this year. They only need a couple of months and then they only need another three wins and then that's them, they retain their title. But nevertheless, that is it for this week, folks. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up and if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom, click the bell to join the Let the DC's notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. I've got my previous video on I've got my previous video on the left, which is my spoiler-free review of Avengers Endgame. And on the right, my dedicated Trophy Achievement Podcast playlist for Season 2. F1 action this weekend alongside some Rocket League. We've got the Rocket League NBA playoffs and the semi-finals of the Rocket League Champions League and Rocket League Europa League. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.